Hi everyone and welcome to The Journey. So as you can see, today we're going to be talking about women's health and particularly pelvic inflammatory disease, also known as PID, and it's caused because of a in pelvic infection, all right? So pretty much we already know anything with itis in it is going to be inflammation. So this is a situation where there's inflammation of uh, the cervicitis, which is pretty much the cervix, um, the uterus, which is endometriositis, you have your fallopian tubes, which is splenomegalogitis, and then you have your ovaries, which is your oophoritis, okay? And all of these areas are within the pelvic region. You can also involve the pelvic peritoneum and also the pelvic vascular system, right? The vessels that feeds the vascular system. So again, all these different things can cause the pelvic inflammatory disease, okay? So the infection can be either acute, subacute, right? Chronic or reoccurring. So with that, it can be um, localized or it can be uh, widespread. Now localized can just be one region, whether it's the cervix or if it's the ovaries, right? Or if it's a spread with all of the areas within the pelvic um, area, which if you notice for a female um, and her anatomy, the pelvic region is where all of her reproductive system lies. So again, all those things are going to cause problems with um, the reproductive system. So keep that in mind as I go on with women's health, you're going to see there's going to be problems with the reproductive system. Why? Because that pelvic region for a female is pretty much all of her reproductive organs in that area. Okay? So, um, it can be caused mainly by bacteria, but it's not limited to, you know, viruses, uh, fungus, or parasites. Okay? All those things can contribute to a reason why a woman would have PID. Alright? The main two um, organisms that do cause pelvic inflammatory disease is gonorrhea and chlamydia. So you have your gonorrheal and you have chlamydial uh, organisms and those are the most, most common. Again, just because a woman has PID doesn't mean that, oh, it's because she has gonorrhea or chlamydia, right? That would be like the worst thing ever. But it could just mean that there's other things, but mainly women who do have PID is known to um, have it because they have this organism, okay? That's the main cause, but that doesn't mean that that's the only cause, all right? So, uh, again, it increases the risk of ectopic pregnancy. You may say, what is an ectopic pregnancy? An ectopic pregnancy is pretty much someone, a woman who has a fertilized egg that has been implanted in the wrong area, right? Because once the egg is fertilized, it's supposed to travel down the fallopian tubes, from the fallopian tube, it's supposed to um, then go into the uterus area and implant itself there, and from there, that's where the the embryo, the fetus is going to grow, and eventually it is going to mature until it's time to um, to to come down the birth canal. Okay, and with a woman who has an ectopic pregnancy, the um, it could be implanted in the fallopian tube, any other part of the body other than the uterus. And they have been cases where it's been found in the weirdest of weirdest places. Okay, so again, ectopic pregnancy is pretty much. A fertilized egg that is not in the correct spot, the, the, the correct spot, okay? And also increases um, um, infertility. So women who have PID are women who are going to be an increase of infertility because, remember, it's affecting the reproductive system, and if the reproductive system is not working or functioning properly, you're not going to be able to carry out certain things of, um, you know, being able to get pregnant, okay? So these are things to pay attention to. Also, I drew a picture here, just letting you guys see exactly what the female anatomy looks like. And you have the ovaries on each side, right? And you have your ovum in each side. And again, women are born with the amount of ovums that they're going to have throughout their lifetime. So they're not like men where they can, you know, reproduce, 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 reproduce at any time, you know, whenever they, you know, are excited and things like that. Women, we are set with our ovums, right? So it can be either 300,000, 350,000, whatever they are, they are set, right? From the time that we're born, we are born with each and every last one of them, okay? So you have your ovums and your ovaries is pretty much the house that keeps them in. And you have your fallopian tube, which is the passageway of when the ovum decides to come out. You have your fundus of the uterus, which is pretty much just the top part of the uterus. And then you have your uterus itself, and your uterus is made up of three different layers. So that's why I put the different colors here. You have green, purple, and orange. 
and the very most inner one, which is the orange one, is your endometrium layer, okay? So that's where they get the endometrial side. So this area will be the area that's inflamed, right? For the fallopian tubes, this will be this area. For the ovaries, it will be that area, okay? So again, it's made up of three different layers, but most of the time, the effects is going to be an endometrium. Why? It's just because it's the most inner layer, right? And once that layer is gone, then it reaches to the second layer and the third layer and so forth. But for the most part, it's going to affect the first layer, okay? And then you have your cervix right here at the bottom. And then you have your vaginal canal, which is the, also known as the birth canal, all right? So this is exactly what's taking place within the woman's uh, reproductive system. And with pelvic inflammatory disease, it can be the whole region that's inflamed. It can be a portion. A clinical manifestation, which is also known as your signs and symptoms, which is also known as your nursing assessment. What are you going to assess as a nurse? Okay, so with this patient, they're going to have vaginal discharge that's going to be malodorous, right? You're going to have dyspareunia, urinia, which is pretty much painful intercourse, okay? Then you have lower abdominal pelvic pain. You have tenderness that may occur after the menses. Then you have increased pain, um, in whether it's on, on voiding, which is pretty much urinating, or defecation, which is pretty much pooping, okay? Then you also have a fever, malaise, anorexia, nausea, headache, vomit, and leukocytosis, okay? And I kind of put that under the same line, just to kind of let you know, these are your typical signs and symptoms that you're going to see. So again, you can have fever with anything, right? You can have malaise with almost anything, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, right? So those are the things that you want to study um, less, just because you know these are your more typical signs of something that you're going to see with just about any and everything, okay? So you want to make sure what, what makes this stand out more than another other type of disease, okay? So I always like to point out the differences first, and then you can always know what they have in common um, with other diseases afterwards, okay? So again, with a pelvic exam, um, there's going to have intense tenderness on palpation. So just by palpating that area, all of a sudden, it, it's, it's excruciating pain to them, right? It's very, very tender, all right? Um, of the uterus or movement of the, of the cervix. So, right, when you're doing, uh, when you go to the uh, GYN, right, and they put the legs and they prop it up, and they go ahead and they, they may put like a little cotton to, to get certain samples, or they might put the tools there, right? All of a sudden, it's super, super, super tender, okay? So these are your, what you're going to see in a patient who is experiencing PID. So complications. So with PID, some of the complications that you can experience is pelvic or generalized peritonitis, okay? Uh, we also have abscesses, strictors, fallopian tube obstruction, which could be because of ectopic pregnancy, right? Um, which pretty much, um, you can have future ectopic pregnancy, right? And pretty much it's the fertilized ovum that's not able to pass through. So with that, you can also have a tubal stricter or scar tissue, right? A buildup of scar tissue, it pretty much blocks the, the obstruction or, you know, have that obstruction within the fallopian tubes, okay? Because of the scar tissue that's built up on top of each other. But either or, whether it's because of the tubal stricter, the, the scar tissue, or an atopic pregnancy, Whatever is going to cause that obstruction, it can ultimately lead to insterility, which pretty much means that the woman is not able to become pregnant whatsoever at all, okay? Also, you may have adhesions, which adhesions is pretty much going to lead to a chronic pelvic pain, and with the chronic pelvic pain, you may have um, ultimately result in the removal of the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries, okay? And you can also experience septic shock because remember, ultimately, it's still an infection, especially if you develop uh, peritonitis, okay, right? It, it perforates out, outside, of the, outside of those walls, okay? And then you can also experience thrombophlebitis. Medical management. So you're going to use a broad-spectrum antibiotic. It can be mixed with uh, uh, erythromycin. You can also have uh, cetrexone or you can have doxycycline, all right? Um, any one of those are your broad spectrum. Of course, they are going to culture, the vaginal discharge that is there as well. In the meantime, this is what they're going to use to treat. And once they come back with the results, then they can go ahead and use a more specific antibiotic that is going to treat 
that uh, bacteria, that infection. Work, okay. Also, you have a bed rest. All right. You want to give them IV fluids. You may also put an NG, NGT, which an NGT pretty much means nasal gastric um, tube. Okay. So an NG tube will pretty much be placed, and it may have low intermittent section depending on if how how um, the state of the abdomen is or if the patient has an ileus. It's pretty much um, no movement within the GI tract, right? There's no bowel sounds, it's absent, um, there's nothing going on, no, no movement, okay? Also, you also want to treat the other partner. So if the PID was caused because of chlamydia gonorrhea, right? Once the patient is now treated and, you know, those, those, those um, symptoms are now gone, you also want to make sure that you inform the other partner and the other partner be treated as well, okay? Um, also, we have nurse intervention. So as a nurse, what are things that we want to do, pay attention to, right? We want to place the patient in semi follows position. Why? Because we want to facilitate some of that drainage, right? Because they're the ones who are having the vaginal discharge. Also, you want to monitor for vital signs, right? Your vital signs tell us the story of your patient, what's going on with them, okay? Also, you want to document characteristics and the amount of vaginal discharge. So you want to you want to make sure that you're stating, okay, is it milky? Is it not milky? Was it clear? Um, was it thick? Was it was it uh, loose? Right? You want to document those type of things and also the amount. Oh man, she put out you know 100 mLs worth of vaginal uh, discharge, right? Or she put out 30 mLs, or it got darker. You know, it was it was light and now it's darker, right? So you want to make sure that you're documenting the characteristics of the vaginal discharge. Also pain meds, right? Because they're going to be in a lot of pain. So you want to make sure that you give them pain meds per doctor's order and then also exactly what the patient is able to, to take because they may be allergic to certain medication. So you want to make sure that all is cleared up with the doctor and the patient so that they can get their pain med. Also, you want to apply heat to the abdomen. You want to do, it, do so safely, right? And you only want to keep it on for no more than 20 minutes at a time. Of course, you need a doctor's orders for that. So. You want to make sure that you're applying it the right way. And you want to make sure that whatever um, the, the, the tool that you're using to eat it, that you have a covering, right? Whether you put a towel or a um, pillow, a pillow, a pillow um, case, right? And you put it in, you don't just want to put it directly on the patient, okay? You always want to have a barrier between the, the, the actual patient's skin and the actual eating instrument that you're using, okay? Also, you want to use proper handling of the peritoneal pads, right, because they're having that, the vaginal um, discharge or so, you want to make sure that you have those pads on them. So you want to make sure that you're handling them properly and you're discarding them properly. And you also want to make sure that you're practicing proper hand hygiene, right, because the same way how this patient has a bacterial infection or so, you don't want to now infect yourself or other people or other patients, right? So you want to make sure that you're doing the proper hand washing uh, routine, okay? And then last but not least, um, teaching the patient self-care, right? Teaching can go a very long way. It's very simple, but it's very useful. And with that, you want to make sure that you're going over the signs and symptoms of your occurrence and also complications. And with that, you may think, okay, they may already know already, but that will help with anxiety. You know, if the more I know, the less anxiety I'm going to be because the more I'm aware of what's going on. So you just want to make sure that the patient's aware and know the complications, right? So they know when to come into the doctor, when to come into the hospital, or, you know, what things that they should see, what things that should, they should monitor, how should they care for themselves, right? All those things you want to inform the patient because it's going to help with the process a whole lot um, easier and smoother, okay? So again, that is it on PID. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Also remember to check out my description box because I do add extra information in there that I may not always mention on the video. And again, if you have any comments, please comment in the comment section below. And thank you for coming on this journey.